Hey guys, Kev here, and I am finally ready to do my collection video. <laughs> I know I've been teasing it for months, basically since the channel started. I apologize for that, but I just had so many loners out. I was just sending loners to everybody because I like to do that. People send me loners, and I like people to check out knives that you know they don't want to just fork over the money for. So. It just took like a month and a half to get everything back in and tell people no, or, you know, I'll send it as soon as I can. You know, I feel bad. I want people to get the loaners. And a um, couple caveats, uh, my Medford Slim Midi is at Medford. They're working on the detent. I, I just couldn't wait anymore. I've been saying once I got my knives back from Kyle, I would do it. So I'm doing it, okay? Um, uh, yeah, that one, and then I have a few on the way, pre-orders, I just bought a Bird Blades Pup, um, just some random stuff coming in, but whatever, right? Let's just cut it off right here. I've sold some stuff in the last, you know, week or so, whatever, cutting it off, this is it, March 30th, I think it is, 2021, collection update, I'm doing this for two reasons, one, I want you guys to see my collection. People keep asking. Um, I don't think it's the world's greatest collection or anything. Um, I'm about a year into actually collecting. Now, I've bought and sold probably 100 knives since then. So, you know, or maybe bought 200 and sold 100. It's, you know, I think I have around 60. Somebody, please, um, if you want, keep track and leave it in the comments how many knives I have, because I seriously don't really know. Um, my case over here holds 60 knives. There's a couple of random things in there. And then I have another case that I put uh, loaners in. I have like eight loaners right now. And then some like random knives that I just don't really feel like need to be in the case. Um, I have one, two fixed blades, I think, to show you. One's like this stupid neck knife. And one is a really cool custom that I had made for my wife. So technically, two of the knives in the collection are my are my wives. My wives? My wife's? My wife's? <laughs> Sorry. Um, a cool fixed blade I had made for her and the uh, Dessert Warrior. But I wanted you guys to see it. Uh, technically, I bought them. I don't know. I want to get credit for it, right? <laughs> I got my beer on the edge mug. i um, going to try to get through this as quickly as I can, but I also don't want to rush. I want to enjoy this. This is going to be for me. So the second reason I'm doing the collection, right? The first one is I've been saying I'll do it. I want to have a collection video out there and people are asking. And two, I want to keep a record. This is why a lot of people do these. I want to keep a record of what my collection looked like right now. And in a year I can watch it or in, let's say six months, I do another one. Right. And, and that's where it's fun. I think so. Um, I definitely just to think if I had done it six months ago, how different it would be right now. Um, there'd sure be a lot less, but um, there would be a lot of different knives. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. So I have my case here and my other kind of zipper case here. And uh, I kind of was thinking of doing desktop to show you, but I kind of want to give you my story quickly and show you the knife. So I think I am going to do it like sitting here. Um, so I'm going to try to work through this. I'm going to start with my zipper pouch case with the kind of lesser knives and the loners. I might just run through those real quick and then I'll get to the, uh, Apache case I have. So let's do the thing. Here we go. I'll try to roll in some B-roll at some point. Uh, just showing the two cases so you can see the setup. Um, so let's just start with these, uh, loners first, um, real quick, right? I have a quiet carry IQ here. Uh, God, I can't ever flip this thing from mild mannered EDC, really cool knife. Um, not for me, but I definitely see why people like it. I have the artisan cutlery area in here, Cerberus design also on loan from Brad over at Mild Mannered EDC. I have the CKF Gavco Tiger. This is on loan from uh, the Knife Whisperer, AKA Knife Liquor, AKA Joe. I have the um, 
giant mouths, and I'm going to try to name every fucking knife, okay? I know I know there's one that I just don't know. There's a couple I just don't know, and I'm going to butcher it, but fuck it. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Riv on loan from my brother Jake Bearded Gear. I put some skiffs, no, Gillian's. I put something in there for him, um, hoping he likes that. And I got the regular bearing sitting here for him. Um, I have the little native River's Edge Cutlery Edition uh, or exclusive, also on loan from Jake. This is in 204P. Pretty cool knife. I have videos coming out on both of those. Um, from my good buddy, my lefty brother, Ethan, I have the Kaiser Gemini in lefty here. Um, he did some anno work on this. Um, uh, interesting, not my kind of anno, but cool, right? Uh, also from Ethan, this is one of the cooler knives, is the Ferrum Forge. Oh, fuck. Ferrum Forge Archbishop. Not the mini. This is the full size regular one that they did with Wii Knives CM390. Um, I can't wait to do a video on this. The action on this is just stupid. Detent is dialed in. It has a little bit of detent lash, but other than that, man, I wish they'd do another run of these in Lefty. This is in Lefty, too. Uh, really cool. I like me some Ferrum Forge. You guys will see that. Um, all right, last one is the Fox Knives Suru. It's on loan from my buddy Matt on Instagram. Uh, cool dude, uh, pretty interesting knife that I just don't like. Um, you know, the, you, you'll see in my videos, but uh, I'm glad I never bought one. It's for damn show. All right, so those are all the loaners, okay? Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, okay, so now to get to my kind of like you know, old slash afterthought knife, knives that I don't think need to be in my case right now. All right, so knives that are mine that I kind of just don't see as like need to be in my main case, right? Doesn't mean they're not great knives, just whatever. So first up is this terrible Boker Magnum neck knife. I was drunk one night. And I just bought this thing on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, has terrible G10 handles. This tiny ass blade that I could not get sharp. And to be honest, I had to go grab this out of my bathroom. I went and just like hung it over the shower uh, faucet. I don't know why I did that. Like God knows why I need this little thing in the shower. But I guess if somebody comes in while I'm showering, I got a little push dagger. I don't know. I'm an idiot. Um, so that'll probably go back there or just sit in here, honestly, from now on. Um, that knife is stupid. This right here was a gift, actually, from my buddy Ethan I mentioned earlier. My lefty buddy. This is some kind of Portuguese, um, like, Opinel style knife, but it's a lefty liner lock. Look at that. It's so weird to me that they made this lefty liner lock. It's called the MAM. Um... Portugal, yeah, just some kind of weird knife. Uh, not really something I'm going to, like, carry or use or anything, but whatever. Um, definitely cool that it was a gift. I appreciate that. Trying to dig in here and see if I missed anything. Don't think so. Okay, so then over here I have... Oh, okay, so these are from my father-in-law. Uh, he passed away, uh, like, five or six years ago. And, um, occasionally my, uh, mother-in-law would like find a knife that he had laying around or something. And I'm the knife guy in the family, right? So they end up with me. Um, and I keep these basically because, you know, I never met him. Uh, he passed away before, um, I started dating my wife and, um, I don't know, it's just something I feel like it connects me to him a little bit. Um, even though we never met, uh, but these he got from like some magazine, it was like a history magazine or NRA magazine. It's like these locked back uh, history knives called Faulkner. <laughs> uh, literally have never heard of it. Um, it's just kind of funny to me. It says limited edition on it. And they do actually cut, which is interesting, just stainless steel 420 PRC. Don't know what that means. Uh, PRC is that... 
People's Republic of China. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so this one has a trout on it, right? You can see this trout. Um, and then this one, there's actually two of these, believe it or not. <laughs> this one has a bald eagle on it. And uh, same kind of deal. They actually drop shut, and it's kind of scary. Like, if I push this, this thing will just fall. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know. They're not very good. They're very rickety. I mean, these had to be, like, 10 bucks on order from some random-ass website or something. Um, this is, like, the first knife that I ever bought, honestly. This is a Boker Subcom 2, I think it's called. Um, it's this tiny little, like, money clip type knife. Uh, right hand only, obviously. It has this frame lock on it, which is tiny, has serrations, and a little bit of a flat edge. I tried, like, last year to take it apart, clean it and everything, and, like, sharpen it. And I just could not get this edge sharp. Uh, I'm not the best sharpener, but um, just this little guy. I don't know. I bought it for, like, I think it was, like, 35 bucks. It's in Aus 8. Um, so it's not terrible, but it is terrible. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that was like my first pocket knife. And, uh, that's basically what got me into it, I guess, when I was like 18 or 19. I bought it at a gun shop, I think. Um, oh, this is also from my father-in-law. Again, he passed away. Uh, I put it on this lanyard that came with something. Uh, it was just this weird little, uh, slip joint. It has two blades, I think, and they are really rusted uh, and jacked up. It's, it, I mean, it's not really usable. I tried putting some uh, CLP and stuff to clean it up, see if I could get it working, you know. It does kind of still have a good uh, snap to it. I mean, that's not bad. And then it has this thing. I don't know what the hell that is. Um, but, again, I like the kind of look of that right there and it's just something to keep uh and then i think i have one more in here yeah this freaking thing uh it's just like a spider co what do they call these bug or something like that uh, it's this tiny they have like three keychain knives and i think this is the smallest one maybe um it's just a little slip joint i'm not even gonna take it out of here it's stupid and I think I paid 16 bucks for it, so I'm not too happy about that, but fuck do I care. It was like a year ago, and I just wanted to try it. So that's that case, guys. Um, now let's get into the more, you know, the ones that are in the, the real case. Right. So I just brought the case over here to kind of get it close to me, and uh, we can get into it. So I'm just going to start with the odds and ends real quick, just so, because they're in here, right? Um, I have my Vero pry bar. I just kind of keep that in a slot at the front because uh, I carry it every day. I have my i3T EOS tie. Um, keep that right there because I carry it every day. I have an i5 I kind of just put in the back. It's not even in a slot. Um, I don't carry this. It's a little too big, but I keep it around, obviously. Um, and then the last, like, non-real, I guess this is a knife, um, is this um swiss army knife shit well fuck me of course i dropped something uh sorry uh victorinox something huntsman i think something like that um and yeah this is uh this is actually a gift from my brother for his bachelor party not his bachelor party bachelor um Oh my god, whatever the fuck it's called. The the guys on the the groomsmen. Jesus fucking Christ, Kev. Um uh, yeah, and it has a bunch of tools, uh corkscrew, you know, all the shit you get with a Swiss Army knife. Never carry it, but it has a little corner in my case because it kind of has sentimental value to me. Um <laughs> next. Alright, here we go. I'm just gonna go down the line, zigzag through, and we're gonna get this done, okay? Um <laughs> This fucking thing is a Boker Amalgam. I always call it the Amalgam. Maybe it's called the Impetus? No, that's that uh, Birch Tree. I don't know. This was a gift from my buddy Jake. Bearded Gear. It's the only reason it's in my case. 
uh, he gave this to me for our um, knife exchange, like holiday knife exchange. It does not have a detent. You can't even flick it if you try. Like, I am seriously trying, and I cannot get it. Bam! Has the reverse bottle cap cleaver on it. A uh, really cool blade. Uh, yeah, basically it was a gift from Jake, and uh, that's why I keep it. So, thanks, Jake. Bastard. Um, Alright, next up. Another gift. This just came in with the knives from Ethan, my lefty brother. He gave this to me along with that uh, Mam Opinel type thing. It's a lefty only carry on, it's a Tangram Rumble. <laughs> Has this weird blade shape with the, uh, fuck man, I can't even think. Recurve slash Gladius tip like my Evatac. Um, it actually has some pretty good action on it. Uh, it's a righty liner lock, but it's lefty only on the clip. Really weird. Uh, this is going to be a giveaway knife on our live stream at some point. Um, which reminds me, check out On the Edge, of course. Oh, right. I forgot this. This is my only, like, real fixed blade. This right here is a custom... Pearson knife, Pearson custom knife, Ryan Pearson, really cool dude, I actually have something really sweet coming from him, cannot wait to show you guys, this right here I had made for my wife's um, 30th birthday last year, and this is a kitchen paring knife, 4 inch paring knife, uh, Santoku style, so I wanted like a Japanese sort of style, because she likes those Vustoff uh, Santoku knives, 4 inches, uh, we went with this, uh, I forget what it's called. It's not carbon fiber, crazy fiber, I think it's called. Um, I got this really cool raspberry color. I mean, it just looks amazing, especially, um, you know, for a woman. I think it makes sense not to be, you know, insensitive or whatever, but it's fucking pink, um, which I like, but I wouldn't pick. It's very comfortable in hand, and this blade is like eight thousandths behind the edge. Eight thousandths ridiculously sharp it's nitro v steel um he just killed it on this knife guys we've had this for 10 months to eight uh, let's say nine months her birthday's in july i can't do math um and we have we i should say me i've stropped this two times i've never sharpened it she uses this every single day I mean, she makes dinners, she cuts up fruit and food and all types of stuff for our kid every night. Um, our kid was born in July last year, so, um, you know, like, she uses it every day and it just freaking weathers everything and stays razor sharp. Like, it's insane how long this thing has stayed sharp. Uh, so that's my only, like, fixed blade, I guess you could call it. Um, I had a couple others. I sold them. I never carry fixed blades. I'm going to put this over here because she might come in to get it. <laughs> she literally was like, no, don't take that. I need to cut some. I need to make dinner tonight or uh, chop up food for her, for our daughter. Like, she loves that thing, guys. Um, and then real quick, her only other knife is the Boker Dessert Warrior. This is the full size. Um, I actually bought one of these for my... What is it? My 100 sub giveaway? Holy shit. Guys, that's insane. That was like two months ago or three months ago. Um, coming up on a thousand, guys. Thank you so much, by the way. Um, but anyway, I bought one of these for that, and she loved it so much. Um, it was the first knife that, like, she looked at and was like, wow, I want it. Like, she's never done that. Never does that. Um, so I hunted one down. Luckily, uh, there was somebody who follows me on Instagram who had an extra one. He bought two to get like the best serial number or something. And he sold me this at table price. So I got this for her. Um, uh, it doesn't always, it kind of like bounces off when it locks up. I don't know if you see that, but, um, uh, pretty cool knife. You know, the deal with these people love them. So I'll put that over here too, cause that's hers. All right. So, um, Recent acquisition, this is the CKF Custom Knife Factory 5th 23. By the way, if you see me looking like down, I'm looking at my watch 
I'm using this to kind of see, make sure I'm still recording and all that stuff. So sorry if I'm like looking creepy, like, you know, um, fifth 23 guys with this freaking ridiculously cool shred marble carbon fiber, uh, zirconium on the bolsters. Very good front flipper for a lefty. I call it my folding fitch, uh, folding fitchin, folding kitchen knife. Um, just this hand satin blade just looks so good, guys. Absolutely love this thing. It is an absolute guillotine. Um, just really fun to play with, fun to carry, honestly. A lot of people think these are really heavy and big, and they are. But if you drop this in your back left pocket, I mean, I swear, I almost never noticed this there. I carried it today. Um, I just love having this thing, guys. So cool. Pick this up off my good buddy, Doug sharp underscore marbles so that is the fifth 23 then we have the channel unboxing knife <laughs> the evatech shadow ranger sorry i didn't get it oh didn't get it there we go the shadow ranger just one of the best edc knives of all time Actually, it is. It's the best EDC knife of all time. I got this for free, actually. I just paid for shipping. It was $13. Um, so if you're interested, I think they still have like 187 of them. Uh, you better hurry up and get you one. The assist action is just the best assisted action ever. And it's stainless steel, guys. You just literally can't beat that. So uh, this is probably my favorite knife in the collection, actually. So that's the Evertac Shadow Ranger. Then we have the Ironfly Zesty, guys. This was a, a Kickstarter slash pre-order type thing that I picked up. It's Ironfly is like the um, budget version or budget company for Kun Wu. Uh, just a really cool knife. It has really good action. Um, you'll see there, it just drops shut. I recently tightened the pivot because there was a little bit of play. There's none now. And it still dropped shut. Uh, this came back from being on loan to a few channels for like three months. And the centering is off. I can't get it dead nuts. But it's pretty good actually now. Maybe I just needed to flick it a couple times. I don't know. Um, and I reversed the clip. This micarta is shit. Uh, the flipper's a little pokey. But other than that, for 35 bucks, this is really good. Uh, VG10, all that good stuff. Jake's favorite thing. Glass breaker. Uh, all right, so this is my lefty Kaiser Sheepdog, guys. This was modded by my brother Kyle, DTOM Knives and Gear. I asked for this seafoam colored uh, anodization, which I don't know if that came out the best, but that's what I chose. It wasn't like something was wrong with the work. This color on the clip is absolute just sex, man. That thing is nasty. It's absolute sex, man. <laughs> Such a dork. Um, I finally got this thing dialed into where it's dropped shut like this. Um, there's no play in it. And uh, I had to swap the bearings. It comes with these shitty black nylon bearings or something. I ended up putting in like Riot nylon bearings. The white cage ones from, from my Arcform Slimfoot, I think. And yeah, it's money now. So that's the Kaiser Sheepdog in lefty configuration. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to get through. A new acquisition for me, the Arcane Design Necronaut. Really, really cool knife. Um, this guy here was modded by Fanatic Edge. So he did this coating on the handles and on the blade, I believe. Um, and then you have this plain tie pivot collar. Just really, really cool. It's like a tumbled kind of uh, finish on the handles and the blade. Uh, you can see that action. Once it goes, it drops. Um, I've been pretty impressed with Arcane Design. Israel Bacchus is a really cool dude. Um, and I am really liking the Necronaut, guys. Crazy out of this world. Next up, probably my favorite knife at this time, is the CKF. Evo 2.0. I've had three of these now in all different variations. This is the one I preferred. This is with the shred carbon fiber, kind of like the 523. 
And then that black wash bark kind of pattern on the back. It is a Spidey Flick Dream, ergonomic dream. This hollow grind is the best I have ever felt. Um, just, just a fantastic design. This is designed by Rotten Designs, John Sorensen. Action is incredible. Just a winner, guys. Next up is my 8020. This is from Demco Knives out of Wampum, PA, which is on the other side of the state from me. Um, and yeah, guys, there's not much to say about this one. This is the uh, 8020 with the shark lock. This is a Knife Joy exclusive, I believe, with this lime green handle. I know it looks yellow in this video, but it's not, I assure you. It is a kind of muted lime green. It's awesome. Um, and then it has this reground, reground blade by Tom Crine. You'll see his maker's mark there. So it basically has a hand ground hollow grind on it. And that is insane. I got this off the secondary from a guy on Facebook. I paid 530 bucks for it. I have not mentioned pricing on any of these shit. Um, real quick, I will go back. So this is 530, 425 new. Evo, uh, this version, 630 new. This guy was 350 because it was modded. I think 320 if you get the regular. Kaiser Sheepdog is like 200 bucks. I got this on sale for like 170, 35 bucks for the Zesty. Only pay shipping. It's free. This guy I paid 550. They were I don't know around that new. That's the fifth 23. This guy was a gift. I would bet it was like 30 bucks. Uh, this thing from Jake, 15 bucks. And I don't know about the Victorinox. I paid $300 for this custom, I believe. Uh, it might have been $350, but it was around there. Donut knife was like $50. Bucks. All right, cool. All caught up. All right, uh, next up. All right, so I'm going to go through the Ashers I have now. You guys know I love me some Asher knives. Justin over there is a really good dude. He's a friend at this point, okay? So... I have basically every one of his knives. Uh, he sent me some. I bought some. I'm not selling or trading them because I just, I like the guy. I have a connection there. Um, by the way, if you want an Asher knife, use the code LEFTY10 at checkout and uh, you'll get 10% off. First up, the newest one, the Asher Knives Sentry 2.0. Really cool harpoon shaped blade. Good poon spoon on there. Uh, standard kind of handle shape here with a axis style lock, uh, crossbar lock, fantastic action on bearings, drop shut, just a really good knife overall as an EDC. This was my budget knife of 2020. This is the Asher Knives Silva. This is an S35 VN. Oh, so is the Century. And man, the pricing, I keep forgetting. Uh, 80 bucks, I think, 85 bucks, something like that. Uh, this is the Silva, absolute phenomenal action on this titanium frame lock with uh, S35VN reversible clip. Guys, this thing was 98.50. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, that's why it was my budget knife of the year. So, love the Silva. This right here is the Asher Nomad frame lock. So, I'll show you the Nomad in a second, but this is on studs. It's a frame lock, very thin. I mean, it's thinner than a bug out, guys. Kind of has that overall shape. Um, 75 bucks on this guy, great action. S35VN, stonewash blade, reversible clip. This is one of the best, just give me an EDC knife, knives, like, what can I recommend for an EDC knife that you're going to probably beat up? You don't need to worry too much about. Boom. Nomad Frame Lock. Love it. Asher Spiro. Contoured G10 handles. 75 bucks. S35 VN blade. Um, drop point. Great action. Again, just a winner all around. 75 bucks. Um just such a good EDC knife. That is the Spiro, guys. I have the prototype of the Spiro here. I was lucky enough to get one of these when he was working on it. And um, 
I will always keep this because of that. Um, uh, just has kind of a sentimental value to me. Um, but a really cool knife Spiro, uh, prototype. This is the, Hey, where is the, uh, Oh, here it is. Sorry. I missed one. Um, Real quick, here's the Nomad. Again, very much like the Sentry. I think they have interchangeable handles, and you can swap the blades back and forth. I'm pretty sure you can do that. Um, this is the drop point configuration, kind of basic handle. Again, S35VN stonewash blade on bearings. Fantastic. I, again, I think like 80 bucks, 75 to 85 on that one. Asher Flashback. So, Slicey Dicey, I think, named this guy. This is his, like, really budget knife. It's, like, 39 bucks. Uh, good action. 12C, 27N, clip point blade. Traditional looking knife with G10, uh, JG10 backspacer, liner lock. This one does not have a reversible clip. It's one of the only Ashers without it, but it makes sense. Um, he was trying to keep the cost down and the design being classic or traditional kind of makes sense to me. So that is the flashback, guys. Um, all right, let's get into Finch knives. <laughs> I have a lot of Ashers and a lot of Finch knives, all right? All right, this is the Tycoona, the Mini Machete. This is the first knife Spencer ever sent me over there at Finch. Um, really cool knife, but it had a couple of small issues. I thought the detent was a little light and the clip kind of reverberates. Um, and he immediately told me, Hey man, f you know, just put that away. Um, uh, I'm going to send you a new one. I don't know what happened. It should have never came out that way. And I basically kept this as a beater. It just sits on my kitchen table. Um, and we use it to open packages, cut down cardboard, all that stuff. Cause it works, functions as a knife. Very good. Uh, mini machete in orange. And then I have the replacement he sent me in this, uh, green, which is perfect. By the way, detent is spot on clip is perfect. Um, I, I would probably assume most of your tycoonas are like this. Really cool texturing on the handles. Uh, good flipper. This is made by Best Tech. They go for, I think, 150 bucks. 154 CM steel. Uh, just a really cool design. I love the mini machete. All right. The other QSP made Finch is the Runtley. This was the last one I needed to complete the Finch's nest. Excuse me, and when I did my 500 subscriber giveaway, again, like a month ago, Jesus, um, Spencer sent this to me as a gift uh, to complete the Finch's Nest. Uh, he's just such a cool dude, and um, this Runtley was the one that started it all. This is in 154CM, but they originally came in N690, black G10. It's a little too small for me. But you'll see that action is really good. Um, it's like a little exacto knife. I just think it's cool. You can spidey flick it with that uh, nail nick. Just an awesome design by Finch. Also made by Best Tech. Also around 130, 150 bucks. Next up, the Finch 1929 guys. This is probably my favorite Finch. Um, it is my favorite Finch. I love this little guy. Black micarta handles, titanium clip. This is made by QSP. This was like 120, 130 bucks. Great little flipper here. Flies out of there. Detent is absolutely tuned perfectly. Awesome hand hand rubbed blade. Look at that like modified clip point. Um, just absolutely incredible. One thing I love about these QSP made finches. You almost don't even know you're pushing the lock bar over. There, it, it takes nothing. It doesn't hurt. You don't have any pressure. It just moves right over. Boom. But it locks up solid as hell. These freaking Finch knives made by QSP knocked out of the park. 1929 is my favorite Finch. Then came the Finch Holiday. This is the big brother. 
to the 1929, at least I think so. This is with the snake skin. Same kind of flipper, but this has that awesome warning on it. Um, this is basically uh, designed after Doc Holliday. I'll be your Huckleberry. Um, absolutely love this knife. Um, detent, again, dialed to perfection. This thing is the, one of the sliciest knives I've ever used. Um, great Warren clip. Again, the action, the lock bar, everything is just spot on. QSP, 120 130 bucks on that. Last bench knife is the Cimarron. So this one came out recently. Uh, I got this blue and lime green version in G10 titanium clip. Again, made by QSP. Fantastic detent. 14C, 28N on this blade. Again, lock bar, nailed it. Action, absolutely spot on. Fantastic knife. I love me some Finch knives, guys. So that was the Finch knives. Let's get into some other stuff, all right? Next row up, I can see the Wee Knives banter looking at me. All right, here we go. The Wee Knives banter. So this is designed by Ben Peterson, a.k.a. Ben Banters. Really cool dude. Uh, really one of the guys that got me into the hobby when I first started. I watched a lot of... Of Blade HQ videos guys I basically started watching them two years ago and I caught up and watched everyone and I've probably seen most of them since I've trailed off a little bit lately because I really like Ben and I did like Zach and now it's it's not quite as good I like Kurt a lot um, but it's not as uh, I, don't, I just don't think it's as good to be honest so um, the banter here is on Thumb Studs. Blue G10 has this small squid-like blade. Uh, reminds me of the squid. There's something on here. Hang on. Like some kind of oil or something on here. I had this loaned out to Grady's gear, so who knows what Chris did to this thing. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Action, really good on the clothes. It almost feels assisted on the uh, deployment. My only gripes on this are the, the lock bar access is a little weak. Uh, and I wish it had a lefty clip. But other than that, I really like it. 10850 on this guy. Okay, guys. One of my favorite designs, favorite knives ever. The Urban EDC Supply Vox F5.5. This is the carbon fiber and LMAX version. This was 275 Absolutely Perfect detent. It flies out of there. Pill-shaped hole. Just excellent drop action. This has skiff bearings in it. No, Gillian salt and pepper bearings. Sorry, I swapped them. Just absolutely butter, guys. The carbon fiber on here is fantastic. Centering is money. Deep carry clip. Carries like a dream. Just wish it was left-handed, basically. I also have this in a titanium and M390 version absolutely love it this was my first one 250 bones for this guy um basically the same knife just a little heavier with titanium and m390 instead of lmax also on gillian bearings love those knives here we have a ferrum forge we made gent this is in the rosewood with a, a bead blasted blade absolutely love this design um, it just has really good action on it. Detent is a little strong on this example, and with no jimping, it can suck a little bit if you have uh, hands like mine right now because I just gave my kid a bath and uh, basically I have moisturizer all over him. But um, really, really cool design. Great finger choil, S35VN, rosewood, awesome clip, easy to kind of disguise. That's why it's called the Gent. I think these were 120 bucks, but it did vary a little bit. Get a little sip of beer. We're about halfway through, guys. We're halfway through this case, so we're more than halfway through. Hang in with me, guys. Next up, the CJRB Small Feldspar, or as 814 EDC Alex would say, 
Feldsbar. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Gotta give you shit, buddy. Um, this was modded, obviously, by BJ Hill over at Hilltop Knives and Gear to have a hole so I could deploy that as a lefty with a spidey flick, and it works like a dream. He put this absolutely fantastic mirror edge on this sucker. Um, you can see he dyed it purple, and um, he obviously stone washed and acid etched the blade and liners. He anode the clip and hardware. I mean, he went to town on this thing. Um, all together, it cost me about 120 bucks, 35 for the knife and 90 for the work. Uh, that math didn't make sense, but whatever. Um, pretty cool knife, just a little small, and uh, you only really have one option for opening. I guess it works all around, but um, just something I had early on, and um, you know, not something I carry anymore. A lot of these actually, but um, yeah, really interesting knife, and it has some kind of uh, meaning to me. So um, that is the small Feld's bar. This guy's is the knife that started it all. This is the Benchmade Bug Out. So this knife is the first expensive type knife I bought along with the ZT 0450 CF, which I traded a while ago. Um, I bought this originally in the blue, you know, standard FRM blue configuration about three, four years ago. And it really sparked my interest in knives. Like I just love the feel of it. I love the fidget factor, you know, um, and it, watching Blade HQ and, and getting into the bug out. Everybody loves the bug out. It just really got me into the hobby, guys. Um, I love this knife. It has so much sentimental value to me, especially after all the mods I did. The scales, the backspacer, the clip, the thumb studs. I mean, I did a lot to this knife. And it's still fantastic. One of my favorite knives. I sadly don't carry it much anymore. But it is never going anywhere. Excuse me. Next up. The knife that people would compare to a bug out. In terms of best EDC. The Spyderco Paramilitary 3. Or the Para 3. This is the project knife guys. You guys watch the build with me. Um, basically this is a K390 uh, bento box exclusive para three here and uh it has burlap micarta scales from uh rips garage tech and then i added black hardware and lanyard tube i bought an mxg gear deep carry clip which comes with satin fucking screws which is stupid and i bought these extra black screws to fit uh so it doesn't look stupid and then i got the cme Compression made easy from OCD for EDC. Just really, really cool uh, invention. Really works for a lefty, so you don't have to drop the knife every time you want to close it. Um, I've really enjoyed this knife. I got it basically centered with drop shut action. And um, yeah, I'm happy with this one, guys. This is the Paramilitary 3. Pricing's all over the place. Let's just call it 150 bucks. This is... The Kershaw Atmos, one of my first kind of knives that I got uh, like three years ago. You know, I had the Bug Out, the ZT, I had this, and I had like a uh, Wii something, Rectifier, and I had those for a while, and then I started really getting into it, right? Um, but this is one of the EDC knives I had for a long time. I really love it. I have reviews on all of these knives mostly, by the way, if you want to check them out. Um, Atmos, really cool knife, 32 bucks on this guy. Sinkovich design. Here is the channel knife, guys. The, I almost said Benchmade again. The Protec Malablu. Call it the Malablu, because it's got blue handles, right? It has the reverse Tanto. It is on skiffs, and oh my God, does she sing, baby. This is probably, it is a top five knife for me, for sure. Um, one of my favorites of all time, just a fidget master, 200 bucks for this guy. Next up, ProTech, Ferrum Forge, Drop.com, Mordex. I just got through the review process with this guy and, uh, I like it. It is not a bad knife. It's a good, I, I shouldn't have said it that way. This is a good knife, guys. A really cool knife. I hate the finger choil and it's a little big and, uh, 
I don't know. I just prefer the Malibu. So makes it hard to want to carry a knife when you've already done the review and there's a knife just like it that you like better, right? But cool knife, Protec, Mordax, 260 bones on this guy. Need another sip, guys. Jesus. We're getting through this, guys. This is the Microtech Ultratech Bounty Hunter model. So this right here is a Star Wars limited edition or whatever. Basically, it's supposed to be after Boba Fett. They don't actually call it Star Wars, but it's a, you know, Bounty Hunter model. Boba Fett has the rocket there, his chest plate here. People call this thing a mythosaur. I don't really know what that is. I am a Star Wars fan. I'm a bit geeky about it, but I haven't read every book. I don't know everything. And Boba Fett isn't actually that cool to me. So I don't want to sound like a dick, but um, it it is what it is, right? And I think I just realized that the top of my head is cut off right now, and that sucks. So hang on. <clears throat> All right, whatever, fuck it, I'm just going with it, right? Um, this is the Microtech Ultratech, so good size for me personally. Um, I love this Tanto blade, has the apocalyptic finish, the worn kind of battle finish on the handle, so it always looks like it's been used, so you can basically carry this knife if you want. Um, I know how to reverse the clip to lefty. I did a video on that if you're curious. Um, yeah, Microtech Bounty Hunter right there. Moving on to the right, next. Sorry, I was just fixing the camera there. OCD. So next up, we have the Vero Engineering Mini Impulse. This has the raw hardware and the hand satin blade. You'll see there the detent is a little heavy on this guy, um, but I prefer that over the other one I had, which is belt satin that had a bit of a light detent. Uh, action really good on this guy love the look of it sadly as a lefty i can't really do the spidey flick but i can do it this way if i need to just an absolutely stunning knife that's why i keep it around basically because the clip makes it to where it's a bit uncomfortable to carry um, but i love the look of it this here is my vero engineering synapse gen 2 so this is the small version of it uh, this is the marbled carbon fiber and hand satin version. Just such a, such a sweet knife. I just had to say such a twice. Um, I mean, just magnificent. Very good action. Perfect EDC size, honestly. Sorry, that was me. Perfect EDC size. Uh, yeah, just an absolute pleasure this knife has been. Um, then we have the... Vero Engineering Synapse XL, the large version, black micarta, belt satin on the blade, just an incredibly gorgeous knife, um, and the action on this one, ridiculous. Front flip, I mean, it's just so good, love it. Synapse XL, oh, sorry, um, these retail for like $350, I think, and I paid $430 for that one. This one retails for $3.95 in this configuration. That is what I paid. This one retails for about the same, and I paid $400 for this one on the secondary. Next up, we have the Orion Knives Solaris. So David sent this guy out to me to get my thoughts on it. And uh, yeah, so I just got it, just kind of feeling it out. Cool little... Um, button lock knife with multiple deployment methods um, good price point with 14c 28n um, for like 80 bucks um, definitely an interesting knife not my aesthetic really um, but definitely a cool edc knife um, by the way the Vero's were all m390 steel all right next up we have the m TNT Mach 1 from Wingman Design, Wingman EDC, sorry, with this uh, interesting lava pattern G10 titanium pocket clip. 
this is an LMAX steel made by Riot. Uh, again, the Vero's are made by Best Tech. Sorry. Trying to remember everything I can. Um, I love the pill-shaped hole. Tom Mayo design. You can see the uh, speed holes. Action. Phenomenal. This is on uh, Skips or Gillian's, one or the other. Just epic, epic fidget knife here. Left-handed. You can do all the good stuff. Um, the middle finger flick, the reach around. I mean, it's just a, a fidget dream. Love that knife. Next up. Oh, that's 180 bucks. Off grid knives, Scorpion. This is made by Wii. It has this carbon fiber inlay on this black wash titanium S35 BN. Four inches of it. <laughs> that's a big boy. Reverse Tanto. Absolutely a really cool knife, guys. I really dig this one. Uh, good action on it. Just kind of shakes down. Once you get it going, it goes home. Um, just a good flipper. Just a really good thin EDC knife. I really like the Scorpion. 230 bucks new on that guy. Protect Knives Newport. This is a lefty version of the Newport. Um, really, really good. Again, EDC knife, just a small, thin blade, very pointy. This will get the job done in most cases. Protec Action, one of the only autos. I think it is the only out-the-side auto I own. Um, just really, really cool. Uh, I guess that Dessert Warrior, but that's not mine. It's my wife's. Um, just a really good knife. S35VN, aluminum handles. Uh, I think it was 165 bones for that. Comes in righty, obviously. Another lefty here. This is the Liang Ma Field Duty EDC. Carbon fiber, titanium, monoblock construction, ceramic ball in the clip, LMAX blade, and that. Perfect detent. Made by Riot. Just uh, love it. Finger choil for days. Absolutely an ergonomic and cutting dream with this spear point blade. Gillian salt and pepper, uh, quarter inch by one sixteenth fairings in this sucker. 370 bones for this one, 310 for the G10. Next up, Civivi Ortis. So we're getting into the ones that I'm kind of still reviewing or just finished mostly. Some of these are keep like ones I've had. But um, we're getting into the, the end of the stretch. The stretch. We're getting into the home stretch here, guys. Jesus, fuck me. Sorry, guys. Will it ever end? <laughs> I know you guys just wanted to see 60 ever texts. <laughs> um, so VV Ortis, guys. I got this so that I could shit all over it. And it turns out it's not bad. So this is everybody's budget knife of the year last year, and I know why. Uh, 40 bucks. it's FRN, but it feels better than that. Kind of feels like G10 or something. Um, you can spidey flick it with this whole awesome clip point blade. I got the murdered out version. Uh, flipper's good. Detent is dialed. Like This thing is really, really good, guys, for 40 bucks. Reversible clip. Absolutely like this thing. Uh, 9CR. 9CR 18 MOV. Not D2. That's important. Next up. The MBK Monterey Bay Knives EZC 1.5. With this marbled carbon fiber. Absolutely love this knife, guys. It's such a fun knife to fidget with. Good um, jipping on the flipper, which is a good change by them. Liner lock is the important part for a lefty. So no frame lock pressure issues. Just an absolute dream to carry. M390, 180 bones on that guy. Easy C, 1.5. Now, next up, I have two of these. This is the Ohlone Knives Goat, version 2. This is plain titanium with red G10 inlay and backspacer. This normally came with green inlay and backspacer, but I did a swap, and I'll show you in a second. Um, and this has an M390 blade with an absolutely perfect detent, Riot made, just, oh my God, it's so good. This is one of my favorite small 
EDC knives ever. I absolutely love this knife. It's thin and slicey, comfortable, fidgety, fun. Uh, great design by Aloni, by Derek Costa. Absolutely love this knife. 270 bones new. This is the black wash. And this has the green inlay and backspacer that I swapped out. So it used to be red. And this one had green. And I just wanted to do a swap. Same M390 blade. Same action. Just such a good knife, guys. Um, love the Aloni Knives Goat. All right, last row, guys. Last, like, eight or ten knives here. The Ferrum Forge Stinger. This was another gift from my good buddy Jake, Bearded Gear. Absolute flicker's dream on this one. Thin, slicey, Nitro V blade, liner lock. Detent is a bit light on this guy, but if you get the hang of it, it's perfectly fine, and it is dialed for that. Middle finger flick on the fuller. Not very drop shutty, even on these skiff bearings, or Gillian bearings, sorry, but definitely one of the best budget type EDC knives. And this has Cerberus Micarta scales on it, which they're 75 bucks and the knife is like 90, but to me it was worth it because I didn't pay for the knife. Um, next up, this is the newest knife in the collection, the Artisan Knives Arroyo, or Artisan Cutlery Arroyo, Dirk Pinkerton design, AR RPM 9 steel, I bought this just so Jake could beat the shit out of the steel and tell me what he thought. Um, yeah, it's, I, I don't really like it. It's not a keeper. Probably going to be a giveaway knife. Action, really good though. It was like 70 bucks for my Carta and RPM 9. Um, yeah. Next up, one of my favorites, the Arcform Slimfoot. This is a Riot made knife, M390. Love this blade shape. Um, Kyle, my brother, <laughs> DTOM Knives and Gear, he didn't know why it's called the Slim Foot, and, uh, it's because it's a sheep's foot blade that is slim. Like, it's, it's not a big, tall, it's not like the, uh, Kaiser Sheepdog, you know what I'm saying? It's slim in that sense. Um, that's where the name comes from, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but anyway, this is on skiff bearings. Does not drop shut, but it shakes shut so smooth. I really, really like this knife, guys. 320 bucks new. Next up, the Northern Arm Skaha 2 out of British Columbia. Father and son team, Michael and David, maybe? I think. Um, really good detent, and it does that. That's what they're known for. Drops shut like a freaking guillotine once it gets going. Look at that thing. Right-handed. I mean, you just got to push the liner out of the way. And uh, it drops shut. S35VN. Carbon fiber handle. I got the one with the reversible clip because Blade Banter, uh, David, Blade Banter, gave up his spot for me to... Uh, get the knife. So I got to choose the materials and everything. And they offer a reversible clip option. So I can carry this lefty. Really cool knife. This is a newer version. So it doesn't have that stupid like milling in the blade. I really am liking it guys. Cool knife. Uh, 236 with the carbon fiber. 205 without. The Civivi Riffle. Probably the budget knife of 2021 at this point. Um, absolute dream to carry fidget with use has that hole for deployment and a flipper tab i put skiffs in here of course great action green micarta handles i paid 50 bucks and i think that's what they went for something like that um this has 14c 28n blade steel really really good offering from Civivi. the spider co chaparral this is uh, the only liner lock I own, I believe, or back lock I own, other than those, like, uh, history knives I showed you earlier. And it is fidgety, guys. People say back locks aren't fidgety, but you can do this. I have fun doing that. 
Um, one of the thinnest knives I've ever had or used. Absolute pleasure to cut with. Um, CTS XHP on this guy. Really, really cool knife. I paid 85 bucks on the secondary. I think they go for like 130 for this one and like 100 bucks for the lightweight chaparral this is the concept knives warrior in lefty configuration see there it has this uh faux tanto it's really a drop point uh, but it used to be a tanto and they decided to just get that uh point out of there i don't know why but whatever um, S35VN, marbled carbon fiber at the bottom there, titanium clip, frame lock, again, left-handed, it's a guillotine, this is brand new, so it's breaking in, um, you do have some issues with the frame lock pressure there, uh, you know, it's not the greatest knife, it's been on loan forever, I'm probably gonna move on from it after this, um, but a cool knife for a lefty, right, 100 and 75 bones for that guy. Uh, a new addition to the collection. This is the TRM or Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. So I bought this off of a guy on Knife Swap and I just took it apart today to uh, get these scales on. My buddy Ethan, he uh, tapped these Micarta Three Wing Deep Sea 3D Wing deep sea blue micarta scales for lefty so i was able to put the clip on lefty here it's why it looks a little different uh and i had a bit of trouble taking this knife apart and putting it back together and right now it's sitting to uh let the loctite dry and let me make sure everything's still good yep centering's good so i'm just letting it sit interesting knife 3.5 inch blade super thin and slicey not the best action in the world so, you know, I'm an action snob, but we'll see how it goes. I'm reviewing that one. TRM Adam, 220 bucks, I think, new. This is one of my favorite knives. This is the Leong Ma Kitchen Utility Folder Version 3 EDC. The Koof Version 3 in lefty comes in righty. Absolute flicker's dream like the Field Duty. Drops closed. I mean, just an epic epic knife guys um this crazy sheep's foot blade small knife fits in pocket very well mono block construction carbon fiber just an absolute dream uh, i got this from leong ma i paid 290 bucks i think they go for 360 and if you get g10 they're like 300 bucks kuf2 love it made by riot uh last up guys this is it this is the end of the road one of my favorite new knives, the most expensive knife I've ever had or in my collection. This is the Holt Bladeworks Haptic, guys. I cannot believe I own one of these. I traded two Vero's and a Sharp by Design to get it, and I am so happy I did. Ugh. Sea Breeze pattern on this titanium S90V steel. On this, uh, I guess, sheep's foot or reverse tanto warning blade. Has a little bit of a mirror edge on there. I put Gillian bearings in here. And look at this thing sing, guys. Holy balls. Best action I've ever felt on a knife. It's so tactile and clicky. Um, just a perfect size, guys. Absolutely in love with this knife. So happy I made the trade. And uh, I'm happy this is the one to wrap it up, you know? Um, yeah, so that is the whole haptic. These go for, this version went for $9.75, I think, new. Um, again, I traded, so, you know, it's random. They go for anywhere from that to, like, 1500 bucks on the secondary. Uh, they're definitely worth the table price. I don't know about 1500 That's just getting crazy. Um very well made. I do recommend adding the Gillian bearings. It was the quarter inch by 116. Um, but always check with your warranty and everything. I'm not a lawyer on your $900 knife. I might be on your Sabibi, but not on this one. Um, yeah, guys, absolutely love the Holt Bladeworks haptic. 
Uh, all right. That's it, guys. That was the collection video. We got through it. I don't know how long it was, um, but I had fun. I tried to give a little bit background on every knife if I could. Um, and I just, I just wanted to do it and have that record. And I really appreciate, if you watch this to the end, you are an amazing person. I can't believe you're watching my video of my knife collection. I used to do that all the time and just like, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And I don't have the greatest knives ever, but it's just very humbling to know that people are watching this. Um, I love you guys so fucking much. You have no idea. You guys have brightened my life so much. Um, and uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will catch you later. Psh.